All right, uh, welcome to Fish Tank Barn Live. So, uh, looks like we've got a couple folks here already. Uh, I've got the Mad Fish Diva, first one here. Welcome. Uh, I've got Mr. Bees as well. Uh, he shared it out. Thank you very much. So, uh, we'll go ahead here and uh, just give it a minute or two to get started. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll talk about some fish tank automation. So, uh, how are you guys doing this evening? Uh, definitely uh, starting to get a little bit warmer here. So, uh, did you guys pick up any new fish over the weekend? Uh, Quantum Star Aquatics is here. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, the Portal Master Rye is here as well. So, thank you guys. So, uh, looks like we got seven folks here now. Give it a minute, another minute or two. And we will talk about some fish tank automation, which is uh, something that I am, uh, it's very dear to my heart, actually. Um, so, towards the end of it, though, we will talk about some downsides, because uh, there are some downsides for sure. So, uh, just give it uh, another minute. Uh, KG Cichlids wants aquarium automation. Uh, yep, there's a... Uh, I actually think you can do this fairly cheaply. Uh, he's about to donate. Uh, uh, the Portal Master is about to donate uh, 20 bristle nose. Cool. Um, ooh, uh, Madfish Diva six day power outage. That's tough. Uh, Candy is here. Thank you, Candy, as always, for uh, for being the mod. So. Uh, so thanks a lot, as always. Uh, she's uh, in the car. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I am going to start this. Uh, Small Fry Aquatics is here as well. So welcome. So let's go ahead here and get started. And we'll kind of talk about what I use uh, what I use the Apex for. So I use the Neptune Apex. Um, I'm not going to give you the sticker shock right away, so I want you to stay. Uh, but there are some cheaper ways to get a hold of an Apex than just going to bulk reef supply and buying the latest and greatest one. Which, honestly, if you're running a freshwater fish room, you don't need. So, let's go ahead here, and I'm going to pull up kind of the things that I use it for. And then I'm actually going to go into my Apex, and I'll show you some of the programming and stuff as well. So, some of you who've watched the stream before have seen me, you know, play and turn the lights on and off. But for now, you know, I'll do that towards the end. So let's go ahead here. I'll get the screen going. And all right, so we got the screen up now. So first thing I use this for, uh, I use this for the auto water change. So uh, what this is, uh, this is called the breakout box. Um, it's an accessory that you can get for the uh, Neptune Apex, and then this is just my water tank. So I have one, two, three, four different pieces of plumbing com coming out of here uh, to do the various auto water change setups that are in the system. And if you hear the gurgling sound right now, the, actually the auto water change system is running right now. So it runs from uh, 9 to 9.04. So I actually just completed. But you can kind of hear the gurgling in the background a little bit. Uh, so it does actually run starting right when the live stream does. So I'm going to flip to the next page here. Uh, the other th next thing is this is the energy bar. And then this, how the Apex works, I guess I should, have I should have started with that, is that you can control each one of these outlets. So these two outlets are primarily lights. but So I have a light fixture plugged into this extension cord. Uh, so basically, this controls the lights. It tells it to turn on and turn off. Uh, same with this. Uh, this is a different set of lights. And then... And then... Let's go to the next slide here. Come on. Uh, is that it? Oh. I started slide two. Alright, the next slide here. Um, this is te testing pH. So this is, uh, you can either do pH or ORP, uh, which is basically an oxygen measurement. Um, I always choose to do pH. Uh, generally, if you're running fresh water and you're running an air stone, you won't need to worry about ORP. 
Uh, this is a, a pH probe. I've got this in my discus tank. So this is like the third thing that I would use this for uh, running a freshwater setup. So now let me go ahead and actually will show you some of my pr personal parameters that are running here in the fish barn right now. So the way you kind of access your apex is you run into, you go into this apex fusion. And so it comes, uh, you have to pick up, a, you know, temperature probes, pH probes. Uh, the temperature probes are about 30 bucks. Uh, and I paid about 40 for the pH probes. Oh, so Quantum Star Aquatics is Melvin. Okay. So, hey, Melvin, how's it going? So, I did miss a couple people that came in late. So, we do have... Pam is here. So, thank you, Pam, as always. Uh, we've got Vinovsky Tanks. Uh, the Reefing Ricken is here as well. Uh, David Gilkinson as well. Um, David has been trying to find a... A heater and pH controller without going full apex. It's a struggle. Okay. So, David, we will answer that question in a little bit. So, right here we've got um, temperature. Um, that is the the, uh, the saltwater tank. And then the temperature X6 here is the, uh, is the discus tank. So, it kind of keeps it between 80... It's programmed to be between about 81 and 82. So that's kind of what I program this at. And then I do have pH probes in here now. So pH, uh, this is the saltwater tank. I uh, put these in yesterday. You can see the big jump. So it's been running around 8.2. Right now it's 8.11. That's pretty typical for saltwater. Uh, the other one I have actually in the discus tank. And we'll just go down here. And that's running about 8, so um, it's a little high for discus, but my discus seem to be fine. And uh, we're really doing well here, so, you know, I guess they can live with 8 pH. Um, I did get them lo get those locally, so. So they're probably accustomed to the water and they were small. Uh, so, uh, Big D Smoke is here. Uh, he's feeding some rope fish. So, you could use this for rope fish. If you're running something that similar to uh, what Haley's running, uh, you could actually set this to do your rainfalls and all the stuff she was doing uh, with her pond. So, all right. So, let's dump, uh, jump in to the auto water change system. So... So this is outlet number. So right. So when we talked about the outlets, uh, this outlet is four dash one. So this outlet is the you know you can name it right. So I can change the name to whatever. Yep. So reefing Rickon. Um, yep. I exactly. And that's kind of where I'm gonna like finish up. Is like you know you can control all of this from from your phone. There's an app as well as you can just go online to Apex Fusion and just control everything from there while you're on vacation. So, and then uh, this is some programming. I find the programming to be pretty simple. So if you just put in your time, so what, what this means right here is so if it's 7 o'clock to 7.04, uh, it doesn't water water change. And so this is the upstairs. So this would water, water change the tanks behind me and runs all the way around here. And then concurrently, there's a second pump at the other side of the room that does that side of the room as well. So that's kind of how it's set up. But that changes them three times a day, and then it changes them for three minutes and 45 seconds. So that's what that defer means, is that means it's deferring 15 minutes, or 15 seconds. And then I can go and change this. So say I don't want to run it here because it makes noise during my live stream. Um, so you can change it to, I could change this to, like, um, 2300 and do it at 11 if I wanted to. So you can change this around, change the programming, and then there's a button you hit to, um, you hit to update it. So let's go back to some of the other parts of the, the screen here. I just hit the wrong button, so okay. 
So the one thing I do also use this for, uh, this is more of a saltwater application. So if you go down here, and remember we talked about the breakout box. So uh, the reefing uh, ricken, um, is, you can use Alexa. Um, I've not tried that. Um, so definitely though, um, I'll have to look at how to set that up. I don't have an Apex out here in the barn. I don't really need it. Um, but that's something you can do as well. But saltwater wise as, uh, wise as well, you can use uh, uh, one of these at the float switch. So for all my saltwater tanks to keep the water level consistent and to keep the salinity uh, around where you would need it to be, um, I use one of these float switches. And how this works is basically, like say it's, it's either an on or off, right? Or open or closed. So, and I'll put it on the screen here. So, so say this switch is called SWX3. So right now this is saying it's closed. Or sorry, this will be saying it's closed. That means it has water in it. And when it drops to open, that means to start, it will signal it to be open. And then you can tell the outlet to power the pump to fill your water back up. So I know Ape, Neptune Systems has come out with uh, uh, optical sensors as well, which I've not had a chance to play with yet. But that's something um, kind of longer term in the fish barn I do want to do is get some optical, uh, optical sensors and kind of have those running my auto top offs and maybe even some auto water change stuff. Uh, who knows? Maybe that's something we could look into in the future. But I've not gotten that far with playing with this yet. Uh, just so you guys know, I do run an Aqua, um, an Apex uh, Junior. Uh, I actually had uh, the normal, uh, the classic one, but it, it died out. So I have a, a Junior as was my backup. And I've been running that for quite a long time, and it's worked out fabulously. So... So that's one of the things I do use. Um, obviously, it controls your lights. So you could have it run your lights. And then going back to the breakout box, you can run all kinds of different things off of that. So you can run um, like various switches, like on and off switches. So say you wanted to turn, um, say you wanted to have a switch automated water change. Like say... I wanted to change the tank behind me and I wanted to change 50% of the water. You could actually have a switch and turn the switch on and it pumps out a bunch of water. I don't have that set up, but that's something you could do. So, uh, and there's all kinds of other different things that Neptune has come up with now. Uh, so what I'm gonna do at this point is actually flip it over to the bulk reef supply page and I'll talk about some of the other stuff that I don't use, uh, but it is out there if you wanted to use it. So we're at the bulk reef supply page. Um, now, I'm going to tell you if you're a freshwater fish keeper, I would not go out and buy the $800 um, Alright, David, we'll get to that. <laughs> Small fry, I'm way ahead of the curve. Um, I don't, for freshwater, I would say I'm ahead of the curve. Saltwater... I may even be behind the curve now. I've not played around with a lot of the stuff, the newer stuff that's out there now for Apex. But freshwater for sure, I think there are some benefits. I just wouldn't spend the $800 to get the new one. So I'll poke around. I did pull up eBay before we got on too, and we'll take a look and see, um, see what's out there. So, so if, here's the sticker shock, right? So this is like, they've changed it over in the last i say it's about a year and a year and a half or so. Uh, they've changed it over to this newer Apex, which is a wireless system. However, I would recommend that you do uh, hardwire it just because it's... Uh, um, it, it just so that it, it's just like, kind of like doing a live stream, right? I have this hardwired in it. Were you on timeout, Pam? No, I don't think so. I think the only two people who could put you in timeout are Candy or I. And I don't think I did it, and Candy's in the car, so I don't know. 
Oh, weird. You should be able to type. No, you shouldn't have been on timeout because um, there's only two people who can do that to you here, and I'm one of them, and I don't think I did, um, unless Candy put you in timeout, which would be kind of funny, actually. So, let's go ahead and get the... Uh, uh, yep, agreed. Agreed, small fry. Um, yeah, one heater boils your fish. Yeah, this is worth its weight in gold. So, obviously, 500 bucks you can get kind of the... Like, the one energy bar, the brain, a couple probes... That's okay. You know, honestly, though, fresh water, I wouldn't, uh, I would, I'm going to show you something here in a little bit. So, obviously, you can go 800. Um, talking about dosing furts, David Gilkison, um, honestly, they have this Neptune dose right here, which I think the dose itself, let me see if I have one in here. Hold on. Yeah, it's about 300 bucks. So these are two dosing heads. Um, I would actually, David, look at the j Bow one. I have had one, and I've never used it. But um, I know Corey's used those. Um, at one point, I don't know if he still uses them or not. But, uh, yeah, so that's they do have that. And then they actually... You know, if you really want to get creative and let's slide this over, I guess oh, you guys can see it. All right, is you can buy the reservoir too for another couple hundred dollars. So yes, that's you, David. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, so like I said there's sticker shock. Honestly, even if I were to buy this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if I were to buy this, I wouldn't buy this. I wouldn't buy the. I'd go get, you know, something else. Not that. It looks pretty, but you know what? I think I can use a milk jug and I'll be just as happy. And then... And then what will kill you, so if you start getting into dissolved oxygen, so there's $700 probe for you. So, let's walk through some of the other stuff, though, that's, I think... You know, if you're a freshwater fish keeper, you might be interested in. Uh, if you have, like, one tank, maybe the auto feeder. Uh, so, that's one thing. I mean, if you're, buying, like, for me in the fish barn, I mean, if we do 90, we'll have a little fun. So, if I buy, if I were to actually auto feed all the tanks in the fish barn, do a little math. So ninety nine dollars times we'll call it sixty tanks. Yeah, so I could spend six thousand dollars in auto feeders from Neptune to feed all the tanks. But uh, I think we're good with uh, without doing that. And then uh, this is the breakout box I was talking about. And obviously, you I mean there's different, you know, this you know the dream bundle that's got like the auto feeders and the. You know, let's see what's in here. Let's see what you get for two grand. All right. You get the... All right, so you get the Apex, the Ener two of the energy bars, uh, the pH probe, temperature probe, ORP probe, uh, the salinity probe, uh, this uh, fluid metering module, the auto feeding system, the leak detector, the flow monitor, uh, display, um, the probe rack. So this is pretty cool. But, uh, like I said, it's a lot of money. So let's head back for a minute. Um, there you go. Okay. All right. So some of the things I think, you know, that you could get into uh, playing around with this. Uh, these are some... Wave pumps, which honestly, I don't need the controller for that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you could get a 300 tank, 
Right. It depends how far with this you want to go, Cichlids 23. I mean, I mean, the saltwater guys will do will buy all that stuff, right? But, you know. So, uh, Turbo Fish is here. Hey, AJ, how's it going? So, I mean, the saltwater guys will spend that kind of money because they're running one tank. You know, they've got the 400 gallon reef tank, and, you know, they've already spent, you know, if you go to Ecotech Lights, right? They've spent, you know, if you've got a six foot tank, you're spent. You're buying three of those at eight hundred dollars a piece. So you can do it a lot cheaper than that. I mean, there's people who, you know, you, you can do that a lot cheaper than that. But I'm saying there's guys who do that and who, who run this, you know, the highest highest end equipment. So, all right. So what was I looking for? Um. Temperature probe, I think that would be a good one, obviously. So this is what I find interesting. So what this is, it's a flow monitoring kit. And so, let me, let's me let go into this one and I'll show it to you. It's not something I would use. So what it has in here is it has this... Um, it's basically like a wheel that's inside of this. Um, it doesn't say, it doesn't show a good picture of it. But there's a wheel inside of here, and it'll actually measure how fast your flow is. So, again, this isn't something I would use, but it is, I think it's kind of interesting that people would actually measure their flow out of their pumps. So, that's a really interesting thing. I mean, it's pretty, like I said, for me, for $200, I would find something else to spend it on. But that's something I didn't want to show you. I found kind of interesting. If we go back here. I mean, you've got, you know, the lunar simulator. Um, let's see. All right, leak detectors. Yes. Uh, this is pretty good as well. These are, there's a leak detection system. So basically, you know, these cards, um, you can put them on your floor. And um, it will give you a warning you know, if you've got water on your floor. So, you know, if I'm up here, for example, right, and that tank behind me, if I'm not up here, blows a seam, spills a bunch of water up here on the wood floor, um, it would actually tell me that if I had that system running. So now there's, even though you can buy this card, you have to buy the thing to plug it into as well. So you've got to find the leak detection module that goes with it. Yeah, so it's 140 bucks for the leak detector. So, again, that's something, you know, depends how serious you want to, again, like with this, it's how serious you want to get, right? Alright, so... And then the one thing that these, the one thing I didn't talk about is how these hook up together. They hook up to something called, using it called an Aquabus cable. Um, it's very similar to a USB, but it's not. And don't ever use a USB. Like, spend the money and buy the official Neptune stuff. You don't cheap out on it. So, let me see if there's anything else. I mean, there's a solenoid valve view if you can play around with that. Um, these are the optical sensors. This is the one thing I do like. And, like, if I were to go and get into something new with this, um, and we'll talk, we're going to end with talking about the Trident, but this is the auto top-off kit, and I like this. This is the one thing I do, like, really like, and you can actually buy this auto top, yeah, auto top-off kit without actually buying the Apex itself. So, you have to get this fluid monitoring that comes with it. But what it comes with, is it comes with two optical sensors. And then this picture is bad because it's a white background. But it comes also with like a manual shutoff as well. And then it also comes with the pump. And the pump was pretty, like the pump was pretty powerful. It's pretty small. But it can pump all the way up here to the fish barn, like upstairs. So these have optical sensors instead of, instead of this kind of lame float sensor. 
And I think, honestly, the optical sensor is probably a little bit more reliable than this. These tend to fail, and when they fail, they fail bad. They either fail stuck on or stuck off, and then uh, you kind of have a problem. So, this is something I'm pretty interested in, is running these optical sensors. But, not not there yet. Uh, fortunately, I've got, or fortunately or unfortunately, I've got two uh, plywood tanks to build first. But, this is something that I'm pretty interested in. And, if you're running... I'd have to think of some more ways you could use this in fresh water. But, I'm sure there's some ways. And then, obviously, this warn has alerts and stuff. It'll warn you. And then there's one last thing for um, kind of the saltwater guys that are that are in here. That I do want to talk about. Um, there is a par meter as well. If you're, you know, that's a more of a saltwater thing. But um, if you were curious about par, you can pick up a par meter. That's the dosing thing again. This thing right here. This is going to be kind of the last part of going through this part of it that we'll talk about. So this thing is called the Trident Marine Aquarium Water Analyzer. And so what this thing does. So hey, King Queen Slick. Uh, hey, King and Queen Cichlids, how's it going? So uh, we're talking about fish room automation. So uh, we're talking a little bit about the Neptune Apex, how I use it. Uh, we're kind of at the bulk reef supply right now, kind of playing around with the different things, uh, kind of towards the end of that. But uh, thank you for making it, Scott. It. Um, so, all right. So this thing is the Trident, and this is brand new, and which is why it's not in stock anymore. So what this does, it's an alkalinity uh, magnesium. I believe it is alkalinity magnesium yep, and calcium. Okay. Yep, so what this does, it's an automatic water tester. So what this thing actually does is it will take, um, it has reagents in here like this, and you hook this up to your, your reef system, and it will test, you know, your alkalinity, the calcium, and magnesium. So that's what it does. It's pretty, you know, you can only even get one, right? We'll go to eBay in a minute. You notice it's like 600 bucks. We'll flip for a minute to eBay. Where is, where, there's one in here. Hold on. Yeah, see, 920. So, I think there's... Um, there's definitely... Uh, definitely a little bit of price gouging, which is why you can only buy one. So, let's head back here for just a second. So, this is off. This is pretty cool, right? So, you get this does testing for you. with uh, Now, what you have to do is you have to buy the reagents... Um, so you have to buy the, uh, you know, once a month you got to buy reagents for it. It'll test your water for you. So this is something, if someone could develop this, um, something like this to test the reagents for, like, um, ammonia, uh, nitrate, nitrite, uh, maybe phosphate even if you're running salt water. That'd be something pretty interesting to see. If someone could come up with a similar system to this. But, uh, something pretty cool. Something that's definitely pretty cool. Alright, so now I'm going to tell you guys, um, saltwater wise, or freshwater wise, you know, now that I gave you the sticker shock, let's go ahead here and talk about the, uh, go on to eBay and talk about what you really should get. No, I have not approached them to be a distributor. I'm not a business, so this is, you know, I don't think they'd really talk to me in terms, like, of a business, you know. You know, if they wanted to send me free things, then I would be happy to talk about them um, and give, obviously, give honest feedback. You know, I mean, like I told you guys, you know, um, you know, like I told you guys, right, it's like, hey, you know, uh, don't buy this piece of equipment for it because you don't need it, right? You don't need the flow, you don't need the flow meter because that's you know 
That's over, in my opinion, that's overkill. So, uh, so here's what I would go out and buy. If I were if I were someone right now, you know, fresh water, and you know, this is a pre-owned Aqua Controller Junior. So let's open this up. You know, the bid it's at forty-six bucks. You know, I'd pay up to like a hundred dollars for it. So let's go to the picture. So you know, you've got the eight outlets. Um, so this has like a that's kind of interesting. This is like an older version of it though, but it still works. So you got that, and then it's got the cable. Yeah, so you something like this. You've got eight outlets. You can program this. Now I don't know if this one gets on the Fusion though. I think this is an old, old one. Yeah, so this is an old, old, old one. Yes, yeah, yeah, but. I mean, you can still, I mean, you could make this one work. You may have to look into, like, the old school programming of it. Yeah, see, you've got, you don't even have the Aquabus cables on here. So this is a little bit of an older, older system. But you could run this. Uh, yeah, this is an old version. I mean, you could run this one. So 44 bad guy ones here. Uh, welcome. So this is definitely something you could run. I would try to get a model later than this. This is like circa 2009, maybe. This one's old. Let's see what else we can find. Go back here. So someone's got a pre-owned brain right here, and you could cobble it together too. I mean, that's that's not too bad. Let's see what else we got here. See, and it's funny that people have created their own little breakout boxes for these. So, you know, this one's got a switch. These have the actual switches on it. So, um, let's see. Yeah, see, this is kind of that same old one. They got the pro holder, which I, you know, let's see, let's see. Yeah, see, someone's trying to get a a, a Trident, they're trying to sell it for like eleven fifty. Oh. All right, let's go ahead here. Let's go back up here. Let's put that. Like for you guys, I would not buy the new one. So hey, Denny's thing. Uh, thanks, Denny's fish tanks, and uh, thanks, Scott, for uh, go ahead and having people hit the like button. I appreciate that. So let's see what I can find here. So this one's a pre-owned one for six seventy. That's a little steep. Um, Trident. Here you go. So you'd have to buy the energy bar, which is another hundred and fifty bucks. But you know, this is a uh, you know the controller with the display and the probes. I mean, that ain't that's getting you know if you have a tax return or something. You know, let's see what else we got. Um, energy bar four. So you can run it off that. Yeah, so anyways, you know, you get my point. You know, check the Facebook groups. Check, you know, honestly, check the salt. If you're really interested in doing this, go to the saltwater groups. So I bet you a lot of saltwater guys with this Trident coming out right now. I mean, this doesn't this doesn't actually run on the old Apex. So, uh, but a lot of the Apex, the older Apex stuff, is backwards compatible. So, if I bought the new Apex, I could still run my energy bars off of it, right? So that's something that's pretty cool. So, 
that is definitely uh, that's what I would do because because as you can see here on eBay, um, you know these guys are really hitting it pretty hard. You know with the uh, with the Trident, and that's a big deal. So I'll bet you a lot of the guys are going to now start get, getting rid of the old Apexes, like, you know the Apex Classics, and getting the new ones so they can run that. So. You know, these guys even got the DIY version of the breakout box. It's pretty interesting. So, so that being said, um, that's kind of it. We've been going for 36 minutes on the Apex part of it. Um, but I do want to get to some other things here. So, I didn't mean to say that was it, it, because it's not. But So, you want to do the quick plug here for the Marine Breeding Initiative Workshop. That will be July 26th through 28th. Um, at the Cranbrook Institute of Science. Uh, that is in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. So uh, definitely if you're in the area, be there. It's a great event. Uh, it's really top-notch stuff uh, in the saltwater world. You know, you get to talk to the guys who, you know, you know, who run the companies, who breed the fish. You know, pretty cool event. So it's pretty cutting-edge stuff. I mean, when the yellow tangs were first bred, we had those people here. Um, we have the blue tangs as well. Um, we had those guys here as well. So definitely pretty cool to see uh, to see that stuff and meet those people up close and personal. Because that's like truly ground groundbreaking stuff, you know. So let us go ahead now. I did the uh, yeah, I did the plug for the MBI as always. So let's talk about the Facebook uh, posts of the week, and we'll let you guys come in as well. So, someone posted on Facebook, uh, generally where I grab these from, is um, how long after a fish dies of unknown causes should I wait before adding new fish to the aquarium? Any special precautions or sanitation ideas? So, uh, sorry, it's getting me summer here. All right, so one, I'm going to address this in multiple parts. Uh, one, you should try to figure out why the fish passed away. You know, test your parameters, test for ammonia, nitrate, nit nitrites, check for disease on the fish. Uh, <laughs> Scott. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> All right, then. Let us go ahead here and talk about... Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> well, uh, I need to catch up for a second. Um, so anyway, so I would figure out why the fish was, was dead, right? I mean, do you have disease problems? You know, check all those things out. You know, it could be in something internal, right? So, I mean, that would really determine how long you should wait. Like, if you find ick, velvet, you know, any of that stuff. Um, you know, I mean, you got to wait a month. Let that stuff go through its cycle. You know, like the ick, for example, right? It needs to find a host. And if it doesn't find a host, then it dies. So, I mean, you're going you're gonna to have to let it lay fallow or, you know, tear the tank down. So... It really depends, right? I mean, but if the, if the fish just died because they was old, you know, say you have guppies and they've been around forever. Um, so, uh, yeah, you've got, you know, you've got guppies that have been around forever and they pass away after two years. You're kind of, they're at the end of their life. So it really, that really depends. And you can put fish in the next day. So it really depends on the situation you're dealing with. I mean, if you've got diseases, like I said, I mean, you got to wait the month, six weeks. Because that stuff... And honestly, I don't think a lot of fish keepers, myself included, would always know, right? If something has an internal bacterial infection, you're not going to know that. So, you know, again, it comes down to, you know, the, all the basic stuff, quarantine, um... You know, using the right medications and, you know, finding what's wrong with the fish. So, I, my opinion is you, you, that's, a, that's a very ambiguous question. You need a lot more facts. And then the second piece of this, 
um, any special precaution sanitary idea. So if you're actually to the point of taking down the tank, um, it's bleach. That's what I would use. Um, there is a video, um, and I'll go ahead and post it up because I know Candy's in the car. But I did a video with um, Dr. Kevin Erickson who actually talked a lot about um, like pathobiology and uh, disease prevention. So let me find the link to that video. And I will get that up here for you guys in just a moment. So, if you guys have, if you guys have a good half hour, 45 minutes, um, give that video a listen because it's uh, definitely good to have. Um, it's, it's stuff, a lot of it I haven't done, but um, he recommends bleach and the guy's a PhD and studied biosecurity. So he's one, uh, I'd listen to what he tells you. Uh, so I would use bleach, um, let it dry, dechlorinate it. So that's my recommendation for that. Um, I, I would use bleach. So uh, do you guys have anything else that you guys would do? Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I have never caught one of Pam's streams. Uh, she goes too late for my blood, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I'm up at 6, so... Uh, you gotta be at work at 6? Wow. I, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know why, you know. <laughs> yeah, I gotta catch one of Pam's streams, so it's on my list. So, with that being said, um, if you guys are not subbed up to all of the fellow YouTubers, ah, YouTubers here, sorry, I can't talk, it's getting late. Um, so, obviously, King Queen Cichlids, 54 Punchy, um... Big D, do you have a channel? Um, I, I've seen you around quite a bit. Uh, Denny's Fish Tanks, sub to him up as some uh, sub him up as well. Cichlids twenty three, um, Quantum Star Aquatics. You know, give all these guys some love because it's uh, Reefing Rickin. You know, go ahead and sub up all these guys. Uh, make sure uh, you know you give them your support. You know, watch their videos. You know, like it when you can. It's hard to watch everybody. Um, I know it is for me. Um, there's a lot of channels that I haven't gotten to watch yet. Just, you know, I've got, you know. Um, uh, yeah, it's definitely got, um, you know, obviously with wife, family, you know, all that kind of stuff. It just takes time. So, thank you, King, uh, King and Queen Cichlids for the kind words. So, uh, yep, definitely sub up here as well if you're not. So, all right, um, we're going to play a little game. I decided this impromptu. Um, name a fish. We're going to play a little bit of a game. Uh, a game, we'll call it Name a Fish. Name one fish, either freshwater or saltwater, and I'll see if I can tell you everything I know about it, and then we'll go validate it on the Internet to see whether I'm right or not. Hey, no, it's hey. You know what, Denny? That's how you start. You know, so I mean, it's like you gotta sit and play with it. So we're gonna have a little fun. So pick a fish, and we'll see what I can come up with. So you know, got 15 minutes. Oh boy. You pick one I'm not good at. Beta NSA. Alright. Here's what we'll do. 
All right, and then Scott's next. So we'll set the timer on the phone here. And remember, I'm more of a salt. I started out as a saltwater guy, so you could throw me a throw me a bone here. Uh, where's the clock at? All right, we're gonna set up for two minutes. Oh, not 22 hours. Anymore. All right, two minutes. So, all right, so we're gonna try the beta NSA first. Um, so it's my game. Yeah, I came up with it. All right, so beta NSA. Um, I would say it comes from Southeast Asia. Um, I would keep it, um, say, in a uh, 20 gallon tank. Um, minute 25. Um, I'm not a big beta guy, so you, you stumped me on the first one. Um, I would say you probably need to feed it frozen or live food. Um, I would definitely, like I said, keep it by itself. I wouldn't keep it in the community tank. So, how much time I got? Forty-four seconds. Uh, all right. Let me see. I'm gonna stop it here, and we're gonna see if I'm right. All right, beta NSA. All right. And like I said, we did this on the fly, so I didn't. This isn't set up at all. And the uh, first one. Let me copy it off of the chat. All right, fine. Let's go to Google. All right, let's see how much of this I got. All right. Let's go back to the screen share. All right. So, here's the beta NSA. Uh, species is known from the river, this river, which I'm not going to try to pronounce. Uh, Borneo, Indonesia. All right, I got one. Uh, range extends northwards to some other places that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Um, it's cool flowing streams and swamps. Uh, marginal ve vegetation. Um, aquarium size, the best measurements, 45 by 30, which I think it will allow me to change the unit of measure. Um, no, 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 no. Okay, I don't care that much. <laughs> I'm going to say I was, I'm going to get myself fairly close on the 20 gallon. Um, a single pair. Something larger required for a group. All right, so uh, fully decorated. Per, um, that's why I probably sh probably should have said uh, um, soft water, dim lighting, uh, sponge filter. Uh, Captain will normally eat dried products once they but offered live and frozen foods. I think I did all right. I think I did okay on that one. I think I did okay. So, all right, cool. That was the first one. I know. Uh, all right, so Paratilapia pelleni. Oh, oh, I'm gonna say that is going to be. Oh, we have to set the timer again. All right, I got two minutes. So, um, 
The next two I know a lot more about. Uh, to pair Tilapia, Peleni. I'm going to say that's either Central or South American. Uh, knowing... Knowing the fish that you're into, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess here, is it probably needs a larger size tank. Call it six foot tank or so, maybe a four foot like 125 that's deeper. Um, obviously, you'd want to not keep it with other fish. It's probably some sort of I'm gonna guess it's probably some sort of monster fish. Like I said, I've I've not heard of this fish either, so. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Fee, I mean, it's obviously, I think it's going to be more of a meat eater. So, we'll give that one, uh, I think I, don't, I didn't give you very much on that one, Scott. You got it. You may have got me on that one, too, um, along with the bettas. So, let's see what we, see how we did with that. We'll go back to the screen share. Or go back to the, the front of the Googles. It's a lot, yeah. Oh. Uh, I bet you I'll uh, me see. Nope, oh, you got me. Yeah, now, uh, see. Um, so, we're back to Seriously Fish again. So, uh, Pear Tilapia is from Madagascar. Oh, oh, I've seen this before. Uh, so, it's like a, yeah, I've seen this fish. God. I'm not on my game. I've seen this fish. Um, Arnis Aquarium hiding spaces. Um, 48, uh, 4 foot tank. Okay. Uh, didn't do very well on this one. So Scott, Scott got me on that one. Alright. Next one I'm pretty good with. He's in my wheelhouse. Uh, Achilles Tang. Um, one, don't keep it if you don't know what you're doing because it's pretty uh, pretty sensitive. Um, comes from Hawaii. They actually eat that as a food fish uh, quite a bit. Um, you got to keep that in a six-foot tank or larger. Uh, you got to provide it lots of flow um, because a lot of the tang species... Um, they're basically, uh, they're like hyperactive children, and this one especially is pretty aggressive. Um, it's, it's pretty big. I think it gets, I think they get to be about a foot. Uh, so, I mean, you gotta give it a lot of flow, make it swim. Uh, keep it, uh, so it's not so aggressive. Um, like I said, I would keep it in a minimum of 180 to two, to... 200 but you need a six foot tank and honestly I would almost do an eight footer with that fish just because it's so big and it's, it's so um, it's not like a you know call it like an embudo that stays in the rock works right I mean tangs are just like they're like go 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 um, I would not keep that fish with anything that's got a similar body shape unless you've introduced them at the, exactly the same time uh, that's what I would recommend doing with all of saltwater tanks. So if you have like zebra soma, which are the, the fish, the tanks that look kind of like the yellow tank. So if you've got like black tanks, gem tanks, um, you know, stuff like that. You know, that sort of that sort of look. If you got that same body shape, put them all in together. If you put them in separate, you know, they're like, you know, one thing I've kind of come to find out as I've been playing more and more with freshwater is a lot of the saltwater fish are like cichlids. Yeah, if you can keep cichlids fish-wise, you can keep saltwater. The fish are very similar in terms of their, their like aggression levels and dealing with aggression, things like that. So let's go ahead and look at the Achilles Tang. Um, that's one I know pretty well. So, 
Achilles Tang is. Um, yeah, that's one thing I didn't hit on the um, HLLE. Uh, a lot of people will be uh, uh, talk say that's for carbon. Um, 9.4 inches, a little. I got a little bit high. Semi aggressive. Seven years minimum tank size was 180. Um, it's difficult. Yep, that's for sure. Um, they're found in the West Pacific Islands, Hawaii. Um, can be aggressive towards um, other species and towards other sturgeon fish. Uh, therefore, keep one in the tank. Can be hover with other peaceful fish. Um, keeping the appropriate environment with fast moving water uh, while providing the healthy sediment, you know, healthy setting for the smaller fish which have moderate current. Um, yeah, but I didn't talk about the diet. I should have. Yeah. So, that's one thing I could have done. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say I won that one. Hey Susan, how's it going? Sorry that uh, sorry I missed you. Yeah, the cares fish from Madagascar, 12 inches, mildly aggressive. Uh, best Captain Girl. Okay, yeah, no, I learned a lot. This is what this is kind of why I was thinking about doing this earlier. Is it's like I, I can learn stuff too from you guys. Like I said, I'm newer to the the uh, freshwater side. Yeah, parrot tilapia is a cichlid. I, I didn't know that. Um, let's see. So yeah, Susan, I'm sorry I missed you. I was busy rambling on. Um, let's see. Let us do one more. And I think it'll be almost be my time at that point. Um, Stars and Stripes Puffer. So I'm going to combine the, the two from Denny and uh, Big D Smoke. Uh, Stars and Stripes Puffer, I would keep that. Um, I'd keep that one in kind of the same six-foot tank. I mean, Saltwater for me is always a six-foot tank in general minimum four footer um, especially if you're keeping stuff like tangs tangs you need a six foot tank um, I'm not the tank police but you do need that oh and I missed Emperor Cichlid too I'll do that one too I actually like watch something on that um, Stars and Stripes Puffer you obviously want to feed it stuff like clams keep its its bill knocked down um, keep it kind of the same six foot tank like I said um I would maybe keep that. You could keep that in a community tank, but you would keep it with um, stuff kind of like trigger fish. I think that would be like, you know, have the puffer and the, cause the trigger fish will stay kind of in the rock work if you're going for that kind of tank. Um, that's something I can see working. I've seen it in the past. Um, electric blue ram. Um, I would keep them hot, keep them 80. I had some that actually spawned for me. I never raised them though. Um, keep them like 84 degrees. Uh, keep them hot. Don't let them get cool because they'll deteriorate, uh, which is what happened to mine. I got them um, kind of as babies. And I grew them up and they spawned, but I, I kind of lost them when the tank got a little bit too cold. So that one's one, that's one that's pretty good. Um, other than that, I mean, that one's, you know, keep it like in a 20 gallon for a pair. Do like a 40 breeder for a group. Um, Emperor Cichlid, I think, is pretty cool. Um, it's the largest cichlid known. Um, it's Lake Malawi. I believe it is. Yeah, it was Lake Malawi. And it will actually... Uh, the interesting fact about that fish is it will actually... Um, it'll spawn once, but it will like starve itself, protecting its young. So, and... Oh, Cichlids 23. Did I skip Cichlids 23? All right, hold on. Hold on, Cichlids 23. Cichlids 23. 23. Oh, no, Cichlids. I'm doing Emperor Cichlid. Okay, yep. 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 So Emperor Cichlid, like I said, it will. Uh, it's the largest Cichlid um, that's known to man. It is... Uh, very big, uh, sorry, it's very, 
Uh, what lake is it from? It's from Malawi, I think. If I remember correctly. Um, I watched somebody's video on it. Um, and they, they'll spawn only once. Um, and they'll actually, like, die once they've spawned. So they'll die like salmon, like, die, like... Nope, oh, I'm wrong, okay. They'll, uh, die, you know, once they protect their young. Oh. Nope, we just lost the light. Starts with a T. Oh, Lake Tanganyika, yeah. Yeah, I... Like I said, I'm still... <laughs> so, yep. Yep, Laria, it's a big fish. Um... I think it was Jay, I, that video I saw, but it was, it's, uh, it'll die protecting its young. So basically, like, it starves itself, protects its young, and then it passes away. Which is, uh, unfortunate, you know, I, I don't like it when fish do that. It's like, you know, you're kind of like, you got your one moment. Um. Yeah, you got your, I've never seen one. So, I mean, the video, it looked pretty big, but video... Um, comes pretty, uh, you know, it can distort stuff, obviously. But it was a big fish, the video I saw of it. And it's, um, it's a big fish. So, um, I don't know what size tank you keep something like that in. Oh, I saw that video, yes, that's the, yes. Yeah, the, 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 the turtle was trying to get there, like, the, in the, the cichlid comes up and literally, like, grabs a turtle. And literally, like, like just move the turtle out of the way. It's like, no, you're going to get out of here. So. Yep, yeah, so that's, uh. Yeah, um, not Nola Jane. We were doing a little bit. We'll do this again next week because it was kind of fun. So, uh, 1,000 gallons, Yeah. So you need a pond for it, basically. Yeah, that's a... Um, so you guys challenged me a little bit, though. That was good. I actually enjoyed that. Kind of, uh... You know, cause there's so many different fish. No one keeps everything. Um, yeah, so I think they're at something fishy. So, alright. So I think we're going to end it here, though. So, uh, thank you guys all for coming out. It was a lot of fun. Uh, so, thank you guys again, as always. Thank you, Scott, for coming out tonight. Uh, and thank you, everybody, uh, for showing your support here. Uh, Cichlids23 is always here. Denny's here. 44 Mad Guy. Pam, Candy, everybody. Uh, Mel, or, uh, not Mel, yeah, it's Melvin. Yeah, Melvin. So, thank you guys a lot. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So, that being said, it is 10.03. Uh, we gotta get Scott a nap so he can go watch Pam's stream. So, uh, we'll play that game again. That was fun. So, with that being said, uh, stay fishy, keep on breeding, and we'll catch you guys next week on Tuesday. Uh, there are a couple videos coming out on Thursday and Sunday. Uh, one is gonna be the pond. Uh, the, there are fish in the pond now, so we'll definitely, uh, see those, um, see those as well. And then also... Uh, we're going to unbox some new fish. So, don't know which one's going to go Thursday, uh, which one's going to go Sunday, but uh, those are the two that are on the docket. So, catch you guys later. I'll see you uh, next Tuesday.